Now, this uh, left hand side of the heart is concerned with your mother and with Shiva, the existence. You get your existence through your mother. And Shiva and Parvati, they are your parents, both of them are your parents as far as your existence is concerned. And it is such a beautiful center, is your heart center. You want somebody to do something for your thoughts. You want that somebody should eat or something, you find somebody very obstinate. I have told you that you can beat them with shoes, do all those things, but there's a very simple way, if you know how to do it. You see, you just think of their ridai, their heart, and put a bandhan to that. And you can do it so beautifully. You can melt a person without any difficulties if you know how to handle their heart. You have to appeal to their heart. And that's the best attraction, I tell you. And the best secret method by which you can bring good in them. When you are talking to somebody, supposing I now, intellectually if I start quarreling with you, you'll give me up in no time. But I have to use your heart power and I have to enter into your heart and that is how it works. So always when you want to do something like that, just humble down yourself in your heart. That is first. First of all, you must humble down yourself in your heart. And from there, to work on the heart of others, just put a bandha, and you will see a person will melt away. We melt our intelligence, our ego, everything, even your superego in your heart. So it's a very easy thing if you know how to approach people through their heart. And that is only possible if you are genuine. Because genuineness is something that a heart recognizes. You can befool a person with your cunning methods, but the heart will recognize it later on. And the person will hate you. Even if you talk to someone, oh, very much, very good, thank you very much, very nice, and the heart knows, oh, he's trying to befool me and he's very cunning. The heart is going to hate such a person. And heart has the art to see and feel the person. So if you could appeal to somebody's heart, and put a bandhan on the heart, you can melt that person. And if you love someone, and if you want that person should be corrected, supposing such a person is a drunkard, or a person who beats you and is torturing you because he's under the spell of some drugs or some sort of a foreign thing, then you just put bandhan to his heart, and you'll see, they'll be changing. They'll be changing very fast. And that's why you say change of heart. Everywhere you find, in every scripture it is written, change of heart is needed, not the change of clothes. So it's not intellectual change, but a rational change, but it is the change of heart. And that is brought about by moving the heart chakra on the right hand side in the clockwise manner. That is the heart itself in the clockwise manner. If you can do that, you can really do marvels. And that's how, on a collective basis, the heart is sort of the innermost, innermost string of the collective one string that is passing through all of us. So if you could strike at the innermost, because in a three and a half circle, that's the innermost point. If you touch there, it passes over this. Supposing you touch somewhere else, then it might break. But at the beginning, if you start striking it, it goes very nicely and passes into complete circumference. Now the center one I have told you is the heart plexus, which we call as cardiac plexus. And it has got ten subplexuses. And the English names for that, I will, again, I'm going to give you the complete list. I don't know when will I have time to go to the medical journal, but I'll find out all of them and I'm going to tell you what they call it in the medical terminology. But they know that there are ten subplexuses which are supplying to the muscles of the heart, 
to the lungs and to the right side lungs and that's how we divide it. But they do not know that it is already three parts and then there are ten petals which are working it out. I'm sorry, twelve petals that are working it out. So three divided into twelve is four each side. But actually it is not so. It is uh, the ten petals are together in the center. And the center one is known as the sacred heart. In the Bible it is called as sacred heart. And this the sacredness of that heart in the abstract form is the motherly love of God. That's why the Jagadamba, the mother of the universe, decides that. And these, those twelve petals act according to the mother of the heart. And that's why we cannot allot them to this side or that side, because it is she who actually makes them pulsate. So here she becomes a dominant person and not the heart. They are the spirit rules. So spirit has rules by itself and it is ruled with the help of the reflection of God Almighty Himself. It is on its own. It is arbitrary. It sees, it watches, it is the witness. It watches the play of these ten pet, uh, twelve petals here. But if it finds that there is too much of strain on the center one, it just switches off. And when it's switched off, the whole thing You see, so you must understand the difference between the other, other chakras and this one is that there is a and the on the other side is a human perfect personality. Three things are together. Now, if you reduce them to our three powers, you will understand. On one side is the instrument or you can say the nucleus for the left hand side working. In the center it is or you can say left hand side working, you can say the Mahakali is working. In the center you can say it is for the Mahalakshmi working and the nucleus for the working of the right hand side is in the heart. On the right hand side where Rama resides, because we can call it a nucleus. He was active. He was active without feeling, without feeling the witness did. Now they combine here where Krishna came and he felt the witness state and he called it as Dila, is the whole play. Rama never called it as play, but he called it as play. So that's why Krishna here is completed and that's why we call him a Sampurna, he's a complete incarnation at him. But now this coming back to the heart again. On the right hand side we have got Rama's place. Now Rama was known for his obedience to his father. If you know his story. He, his father was in uh, uh, Ayodhya, he was ruling there and he had three wives. The third wife had no, I mean he, she had two ch sons but she could not see Rama getting the throne. She was a very nice mother, but somebody, you see, some lady went and told something to her and she listened to her and she told her husband that if you want to give me my boon, the promised boon, you have to make Rama go into the jungle for fourteen years and give the throne to my son Bharat. And when Dashrath heard this, he he fainted. He fainted with this request, but Rama was there, he heard it and he immediately told her that I'm going to the forest and I've accepted it and you appoint your son as the Bharat for me, it's all right. And that's how he went, you see. Just to obey the order of his father, because father had not even ordered, but because he was compelled, he had given his wife two boons that once you see in a war she saved his life so she he said that whenever you want you can ask for these two boons 
and they were, she, she never knew that she would use them in such a funny way. Later on she repented because Bharata came and he refused to accept the throne and he put only Rama's slippers there and ruled there and everything was different. But Dasharatha died in, because when Rama went away he just died. So, you see, Rama's life shows how he was obedient to his parents. He suffered so much. Anyone who has not been respectful to his parents. You see, if your parents have been unkind, you have every right to tell them that they should not be unkind to you and that you feel hurt. But you have no business to answer them back. And you have to be respectful. You have to be respectful because they represent your primordial parents. You are not to shout at them and misbehave. You have to be really respectful to them. They may be bad people, but you have to respect them because you have chosen them. When you were born, you chose them. You could not have been born to them. You have really chosen them and you said, these are going to be my parents. So if they are your parents, they are there because of certain reasons, because you have been seeking them in the, your previous lives and that's how you are there. You are not to boss over them. It's real, I'm telling you the secret. It's not for any thing for, you see, to make you change your ways or anything, but I'm just telling you the secret because you have lost the idea of the secretive methods of winning over people and understanding them and managing them and really you will have your way. Only thing is to respect.